I'm Craig Patterson. I'm the founder and publisher and CEO of Retail Insider. We're talking about Nordstrom today, specifically in the Calgary market. Nordstrom announced that it's going to be leaving the Canadian market, and uh, that's affecting uh, kinds of different cities, including Calgary, which has a Nordstrom store at CF Chinook Centre. To discuss the future of CF Chinook Centre, specifically around that uh, box there, is Grace Yan. She's a broker with Blackstone Commercial and a community advocate. And you also ran for mayor, Grace, a little while ago in Calgary. I did, yes, and and thanks for having me, Craig. I'm now, are you it's surprised a to be here? Yeah, thank you so much, Grace. Now, are you surprised with the closure of Nordstrom in Canada? Well, I was and I wasn't uh, because I mean, I, I'm at Chinook all the time. I, I'm I've seen Nordstroms and other stores um, that aren't busy. I, I mean, Saks isn't busy. Sometimes Saks is even closed for the day. So I wasn't really surprised and um, sometimes and you, lately, the past little while going into Nordstrom's, they haven't been restocking. So it uh, then you're wondering, well, there's just nothing. It's just been bare lately. So, yeah, you know, no. I think it wasn't a surprise, but you, you were just hoping that they sort of figure something out to to stay because, I mean, it was exciting when they came to Calgary. Yeah, I wonder if that restocking issue had anything to do with uh, the fact that Nordstrom was already thinking about leaving Canada, I wonder. Well, I think, you know, when you do your decision making around um, sort of the future uh, of the stores, um, you know, you have to look at... Um, you know, when you're restocking or even hiring and that sort of, it, it takes, you know, you have to plan well in advance. And so, you know, you kind of saw the writing on the wall, um, which is sad because even the cafe there, it's not busy either. And um, so, you know, with uh, Nordstrom's leaving and which is a huge anchor for Chinook Center. And with, I mean, CF Chinook Center and CF Market Mall being one of our class A shopping malls. And there, it's just not busy. There's so much closures in those malls. And, um, and it's, you just see that, you know, all of a sudden the store is gone and, you know, it'll be t taped off or, you know, um, covered, and you don't see anything else that's coming in, and and so it it it, it per, it's a perception to people that oh no, <laughs> you know, another store closed. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, and and that's in a mall that's actually quite busy. I, I was in CF Chinook Center. I think it was in October, and uh, I'm always blown away with the foot traffic that's coming through there, particularly around the Louis Vuitton store, where it's just like a horde of people that always seems to be coming by towards the Apple store. Yeah, the Apple store is always usually busy, but in the past while, I'd say as of January, the traffic has slowed. Uh, you've seen more like um, stores close. Um, and, and you're just going, well, what, what, you know, I mean, this is what I'm hearing from people too, shopping at these malls and going, what the heck is going on? All you just see is these stores closing. And then now with Nordstrom's closing, you know, and, and we're told that there's this huge, you know, Alberta's in a boom, booming, but when you see stores like this closing and, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond is closing, 160 stores, you know, Walmart's closing, I think two locations in Alberta. Oh. So it's, um, you know, it, it, there's going to be a shift. And I think we need to really uh, repurpose these malls, right? Like, um, I mean, they do this in Toronto. They do this in different parts of the world where, you know, there's the main floor commercial and then they build up uh, condos and there's a built-in clientele, like a lifestyle center, 
What do you it's think easy. is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen to this Nordstrom box uh, at CF Chinook Center? Do you think they're going to extend the mall? Do you think they can find one tenant to uh, go in there? Do you think that they're going to split it up into a bunch of smaller retailers? I think they're going to have to demise it because to find, I know that um, Zellers is coming back in, but they've taken um, some other of the target locations. Okay. Um, some people are saying, what, are they going to put a dollar store there now? <laughs> like a big, um, because we're seeing more and more dollar stores. We're seeing more, um, you know, Zellers is coming back. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of, an, a lot more sort of lower end uh, retail stores popping up. Like I'm seeing more dollar stores, you know, almost, you know, every few blocks now. It's like a 7-Eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, how do you think that the closure of Nordstrom at CF uh, Chinook Center is going to impact other retailers, as well as, say, even perhaps some commercial real estate deals? The reason I ask this question is because I was told recently in a major city that there were some negotiations for some commercial real estate space. The moment that the announcement was made about Nordstrom, uh, brokers called and said, hold on, we need to figure out what's going to happen with these Nordstrom boxes because we don't know what the foot traffic is going to be like. Uh, what do you think it's going to be like at CF Chinook Center as, as Nordstrom closes and the foot traffic changes? Well, of course, you know, I mean, Nordstrom, you know, it, it um, has a draw of people. And with them leaving, again, it's going to impact the traffic again. And so, yeah, of course, you know, other potential tenants are going to be, you know, rethinking because if they're not going to have the same foot traffic and, and CF can't guarantee the same foot traffic, that's going to affect everyone's sales overall. Okay. Mm. And, and I mean, it's been a challenge, the foot traffic anyways, since COVID, you know, um, just, just a lot of the box mortar uh, type retail stores are really struggling to, you know, to sort of get back to where they were pre-COVID because, you know, that was two years of people adjusting to online and they were forced to adjust online, you know? And so now that people are used to this, oh, well, I'm just at home and I'm just ordering everything and it's convenient. You don't have to find parking. You don't. So I think that's why uh, these, the malls in general just have to, you know, repurpose to to attract people to be there. And that means maybe just, you know, you have to build up and build condos on top of it, where there's restaurants, you know, grocery stores, okay, gyms, um, cafes, bakeries, it's all, it's all there. And yeah. I think that would really um, attract, it's a, a different model mm -hmm. um, that most North American malls don't have. But other malls in the world are set up like that. Absolutely. And in Calgary now, um, you mentioned foot traffic. Uh, you also mentioned that the Saks Fifth Avenue store in the mall. Now, for those that are not aware, there's three anchors. There's a Hudson's Bay store. There's a Nordstrom store that's going to be closing in uh, will do course, I suppose, at this point. And there's a Saks Fifth Avenue. Now, the Saks Fifth Avenue has been quite quiet. If Saks Fifth Avenue was to shut down at CF Chinook Center in Calgary, uh, what do you think could happen there? Because that would be quite catastrophic for one mall to lose two relatively high-end anchors. Look. I mean, it's a disaster already that Nordstrom is leaving. And if Saks was to leave and and like, again, you know, I see Saks randomly closing. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. Um, and sometimes they're closed early. The, the hours are so random that I know that some of these um, stores are saying, you know, we'd rather take the fine of closing than having to open and pay the costs to staff it for the day. Wow. You know, and I think the bigger picture though, Craig, is we wouldn't have to worry about all of this if the economy overall was in better shape. You know, if, if we had, instead of all these companies leaving Canada, you know, if we had them coming and, and we're employing people, which means giving them incentives, okay? Um, you know, first five years of being here, I mean, you want to attract businesses to come to Canada. And, and I think the question is that we have to think about why are they leaving? Why are they losing money? 
when, you know, Canada is a great country and a lot of positives of, of setting up a business in Canada, or what we think, but when we're losing Bad Bath and & Beyond and, and um, Abercrombie and & Fitch and all these companies that have left, you know, um, I mean, it's endless, the list that are leaving Canada. And so I think as a country, we have to think, well, why? Why are they leaving? Why aren't they making money? We, we know the numbers. We know the losses. We know what the problems are. We have to offer solutions. And I think we have to talk more about the solutions of keeping and retaining, you know, excellent companies like Nordstrom's. And I would be sitting down with Nordstrom's and saying, this is a disaster. What can we do even on, on, on the government side or on, you know, mm-hmm. um, on the landlord side, we all have to work together and make sure we don't le- lose companies like this. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, retail in Calgary generally. Now, obviously, CF Chinook Centre, which is not downtown for those that uh, may not know the Calgary area very well. Um, what are you seeing downtown? Because in downtown Calgary, there are also three retailers. There is a Hudson's Bay store, which has been downsized. There's a La Maison Simons store, which is quite large. I think 92,000 square feet, if I remember the article that I wrote. And there's a yeah. whole Renfrew store, which recently just renewed its lease. Um, what If you seen anything in downtown Calgary in terms of retail as well as say the dominance of Holt Renfrew in the market at the higher end? Yeah, I think the only way we're going to retain a lot of these businesses, uh, especially downtown, because our our downtown is still 70% vacant. Okay, we're seeing more and more people get back to work, but there's still a lot of the head offices that have left Calgary. So we still have hundreds and thousands of square feet vacant. And the way, the only way we're going to retain businesses downtown is rent adjustments. Okay. And, um, and I get it. It needs to work for the landlords as well. Um, but that's the only way we're going to retain businesses. Okay. And, and even attract them. I mean, I, I, we've got lots of, I represent franchisors that expand globally and across Canada and it's always, you know, calculating, of course, labor costs and, and lease rates. It's a huge, huge impact on decisions of, of where you're going to be, either in Canada or elsewhere in the world. You know, like lease rates in, in the U.S. are, I mean, way, way more attractive and your margins are way better in the States. Um, and leasing is a lot easier as well. And uh, overall, I think we need to make the whole process of leasing, you know, not only lease rates, but just the, the time it takes, you know, it's, it's, it gets to be too lengthy of a process even uh, for, for companies to even want to expand, you, you know, so there's many, many challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know what, we wouldn't be even talking about these issues if overall, you know, people had money to spend and, um, you know, we were bringing companies here rather than talking about them leaving. Do you think that one of the uh, big uh, either Asian or European department stores might look at uh, coming into the Canadian market? I know that Galleries Lafayette from France had uh, intended to come into with Montreal and possibly Toronto markets before the pandemic, but that never happened. Uh, you've obviously got some incredible stores that are in places like, say, Seoul. You've got Lotte. You've got uh, Shingzige. Do you think any of these retailers might look to come into the Canadian market or do you think that we're too small and not wealthy enough? And, you know, I hear that a lot. OK, when I, I work globally. And a lot of these companies do say that Canada is not a big enough market. You know, I, I think our population is the same population as California. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, so for them to really consider Canada as an expansion, then we really have to have something that they that would benefit them, whether it's lease rates or uh, so certain concessions, tax incentives. Um, because there's a, you're right. Like, I mean, in Asia, they're fine. They're this sheer population, you know, Asia, Europe and U S and you know, they've got the population to, you know, sustain their models, but, and, you know, Canada doesn't have that population. 
nor do we have the tax incentives. Um, so, but what, this is what we have to think about. Yes, we want those companies coming internationally. Okay, we really do. And so that's why we have to learn to work with the rest of the world. And we're the only country in the world that has to have everything in two languages. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and again, for, for a model, for a company, that, that's a big decision because that's an extra cost, extra approvals, extra, you know, it has to be approved by the government and every, all the products. And so these are all things that companies are, well, you know what, forget it. This is, you know, let's just, let's just go where it's easy and it's comfortable and our margins are better. Oh yeah. What do you think is going to happen with the Nordstrom space at CF Chinook center over the next uh, couple of years? I hope it doesn't stay vacant because that would just be horrendous. It's, it's looking sad as it is. Okay. Chinook mall and market mall and all, all the malls and being one of our best malls in, in the city. And I mean, and I compare it to other places where we, you know, we want to be a world-class city, but it, it is, it it's, looks old and tired and, it just looks sad, you know, um, when, I mean, especially when you see that, you know, there's nobody there and it's not, it's not vibrant. You don't get that vibrant feeling like, you know, things are happening and things are growing. And here now we're seeing, you know, Chinook losing Nordstrom's and it's going to be more sad. I, I just hope that, um, well, the, they'll probably have to demise it and, they seem to be putting, I said, you know, like lower end type retail, you know, like, um, which is great. As long as it's filled, I think, and it draws people there. Um, that's what we really need, you know. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. We'll wrap it up here, Grace. This is Grace Yan, your broker with Blackstone Commercial Community Advocate, former mayoral candidate. You've also got the, I think, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce uh, in Calgary. Yes, yes. So we've got the, uh, so I'm the president of the Philippines Chamber of Commerce, which we actually, and that's what we're trying to do, Craig, is, is attract businesses uh, from the Philippines to Canada. And, um, so we've got some brands already that are coming in that are here trying to expand as well. Um, and it is, it, it's, it's a challenge, but you know, I always think, you know, let's just focus on the solutions because there is a solution to this and we can grow and, and, and companies like Nordstrom's shouldn't have to leave. And we don't want them to leave. We don't want Nordstrom's to leave. We don't want Saks to leave or, or, you know, or Bed Bath & Beyond. Because then now we have less and less selection and then people are now going, well, I guess I'll just order from Amazon. Or, or you know, online or, I mean, we, we have less options now, which is not good for the consumer. That's right. right. That's right. Or landlords or anyone doing deals. Or in terms landlords. Of deals yeah, yeah. So I think let's focus on the solutions and uh, get these companies not leaving. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Grace. And I'm Craig Patterson. I'm the founder, CEO, and publisher of Retail Insider Media Limited. This is Retail Insider video series. We're going to be talking more about Nordstrom and its spaces, what can be done, what went wrong. These conversations are going to be here and I think we're going to be seeing some more announcements coming down here in Canada. So thank you so much again, everyone for joining us today. Take care and bye for now.